Aragorn throwing kills. He's like drunk out of the bed. Yeah. Well, America, it's that time. It's that time where we have the greatest sports show on KAZ Radio. None other than Talking Sports with Tim Riggler and his sidekick, Johnny Two Names. How you gentlemen doing? We fine. How are you? Man, I'm doing great. I'm excited about today's show. I can't wait to look at the, the, the fashions that were on the runway oh, and man. all of that. <laughs> Now, you know what? Oscar Recast. You know, I really miss Joan Rivers. <laughs> I mean, she would make so much fun of the different outfits. Yeah, she, she would. You know, I don't think no one, no one's going to be able to bring, bring, bring that touch back to the, back to it like Joan. Because Joan really, you know, brought a, 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 um, a flair, a flair yeah. and, 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 and funniness to the whole, the right. whole uh, Oscar thing. But, you know, I know it's part of the show, but Chris Rock, he rocked. He rocked. He, he, was, he, 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 he had me cracking up, you know. He had he had me cracking up. So I am looking forward to today's show, talking sports with Tim Rickner. I'm gonna get out of the way and let Tim and Johnny do what they do best. Well, you, well, you said you're excited, but I'm more excited to talk about the combine, which I wanted to talk about Friday, but I got hit with the fl- a little bit of the upper respiratory flu uh, on Thursday, so I wasn't able to make it out Friday. Uh, but now we can dive into the combine, the winners, the losers, who we liked, who we didn't like. Uh, I'm going to start out right now with saying uh, tie to top the QB rankings, my QB rankings, most QB rankings. Okay. Is Carson Wentz, Jared Goff. A little bit of separation, not much. Um, we were talking off air a little bit mm-hmm. about you know Christian Hackenberg and how he just looked absolutely terrible. Um <laughs> I kind of attribute how his his lack of confidence attributes to having to play in James Franklin's spread system where okay. if he would have stayed in a pro, true pro style the last two years, he would have been a much different type of quarterback. He would have looked a little bit better. Connor Cook looked good, but I still – the leader off-the-field leadership still concerns me, which is why I think he's – I wouldn't really take him in the top five. Okay. Why I would kind of wait till late, maybe day two to take him. Paxton Lynch looked great. Um, another topic, topic we talked off air. We were talking about you know everything similarly. Derrick Henry and Zeke look so similar to each other. Right, 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 right. Um, the thing about it, Zeke is a little faster. Zeke a little bit faster, and Zeke is a little more of a polished blocker, right. pass protector right. than Derrick Henry. Um, you know, I'll, I'll dive into what what I like, what I will talk about, and what I liked, and, and everything with mechanics. But uh, what, what what did you? Primarily, like uh, what you saw a little bit that you watched this weekend. You just saw like, like the quarterbacks, so just yeah. the whole, just thing. as a whole, what you saw over the I, three I, days I, or I, six days. I like what I saw in the quarterbacks, and 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 as we was talking off air, when you watch the combines, you really you you can get a feel of everything, but just like we said off air, you had Terrell Suggs who was slow in the combine. People say he wouldn't be a great pass rusher. Come out to be one of the greatest pass rushers. Tony Brown, 4'7". He's going to be a slow receiver. He's not too slow in the NFL. So I looked at the combine and I said, okay, I see a lot. But I see a lot of guys need to be polished up. But yes. Zeke, I always did like it. I'm not yeah. an Ohio State guy, but I gotta, I give props to where it's done. He's, he's good. Now, Jones, I don't know. That was, very, that was unfortunate that he... Tore his hamstring and right. pulled his hammy. Right, uh, running the forty because I really wanted to see him throw. Right, right. Uh, to see maybe if he polished up the because his deep ball looks like something like I could just take a football and punt it in the air <laughs> with the hang time it gets. <laughs> but I really want to see if maybe that if he polished that up with training in Dallas over the past couple months. That's why I wanted to see, and it was unfortunate that he got hurt. But hopefully, uh, I'm hoping the Big Ten Network televises their pro day March okay. 11th, okay. so I can watch him throw. Okay, well. Um, I wanted to see what he had because I noticed when he was on the news, he before the combine, he was doing all this talking, you know, about you know how he liked to improve and what he needs to do. So I was very interested, being a, still a fan, to see what this guy brings to the table because you know he's one of the big quarterbacks, like a big Ben well, type the, of guy. The Steelers are uh, interviewed with um, Vernon Adams, the quarterback from Oregon. That's so bad. That's a big guy, you know. I don't know, 5'11's big, but... I mean, well, they probably use him for something else. They probably won't yeah, use him for no quarterback. Yeah. You know, just like um, 
they brought um, quarterback Terrell back Burr. as a receiver. Yeah. So, you know, they're probably look because I know they're not going to use him for a corner. He's too small. No. But the receiver is 6'4". So I think they'll probably use him as a, as a slot, slot, slot receiver or coming out the backfield. I don't think they're going to use somebody that small as a quarterback. I mean, like, especially with Johnny, and uh, he didn't really do much. That's why you don't want the smaller quarter. I don't want the smaller quarterbacks. I, Drew Brees is the exception because he's a pro-style pocket guy. Right. That's right, why he's right. succeeded and survived in the NFL. Right. And I'm quite sure Pittsburgh did get that guy as a quarterback. Boy, the Browns fans would be happy. They'd be like, "Look, now y'all got one five eleven. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't another, think they use runs them as around, a throws right. out for dear life. Right, right. Another winner I saw this weekend. Um, we're actually two Notre Dame guys, Will Fuller and Sheldon Day. You know what? I'm not a Notre Dame fan. <laughs> they, they. Will Fuller looked good. Will Fuller looked good. Yeah, hey. four three. He was fast. I mean, he. In the first group, he looked a little bit better in the gauntlet. I mean, I this is why they have twenty year vet guys coach this combine because right. Saturday I was getting uh, if you were to ask like uh, you know my mom was doing some cleaning around the house and I was watching I was getting I was getting seriously ticked when seven guys screwed up the gauntlet drill when those seven guys weren't the first three the first three in the drill I could see why you would screw it up because you've only been practicing it for a short mm-hmm. amount of time and. It's the, you know, they're doing a little bit differently at the combine. You know, I understand, you know, in the back of your mind, it's mm-hmm. time. So you feel pressured a little bit. But when you have seven other guys behind you right. that have been watching, and you, that shows that you can't take coaching. You have to be able to take coaching. Well, don't forget, these are young kids. So they still have a lot to learn. But then don't forget, once you get in the NFL, you're going to have pads, helmets, on that kind of puts a little they don't even run, right? Doesn't it? But still, but, like, you got to be able to be a practice player at the yeah, same time, you know. So it, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, and there were a lot of drops. I wasn't really concerned about the drops. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's gonna happen, yeah, in a yeah. drill, but I was just more concerned. I was more upset that they were screwing up right off the bat. And then you had like t- like uh, the mirror drill Friday with the lineman. Um, you know Taylor. Everybody else in a mirror drill with offensive linemen. You have to. You have. This is the line of scrimmage, right. and you have to be very tight to the offensive line and mirroring, mirroring. Right. right. And Taylor Decker was doing it like a pass set, and I was sitting there saying, "Why are you backing up? Like, stay tight to the line." <laughs> Will, I guess that's something that he played when he was in college. What's well, the thing? He's got, I mean, he's guys gonna be true left tackles, but you still have to be able to be a run blocker well, as a left tackle. Give him time. He'll learn. He'll learn. That's, he'll that's learn. why. I, I mean. Why I had I have Laramie Tunsil and Ronnie Stanley from Notre Dame okay. and Jason Spriggs, the offensive tackle from Indiana, is my top three guys. I have Taylor Decker as my fourth or fifth because of that. He didn't really have that great of a combine, and I think he still can develop some some yeah. run blocking. Yeah, yeah. Um, development is the is the main key. Um, um, the young kids, um, a lot of skills they used in college. They're going to only use some of it in the NFL because things are going to change. You know, um, a coach going to bring in, you know, you may come from college as a left tackle and he may want you to play right tackle. So, you know, your game may well, they're change. They're saying about if Tennessee takes Laramie Tunsil, they'll move Taylor Lewan away. Exactly. Right, tackle. right. So his game may change. And now he's happen- he's been doing left all his life. Now he wants to do right. So it's something you have to learn. What's it, well, the thing with. People will say that oh, you know, right tackle is different than left tackle. No, it's the same position. It's just you're now you have a more difficult pass rushing responsibility because you're the quarterback's blind side. Right, and it all, you have to be a little bit more athletic. No, but it's the same position. And it all depends on who's on the other side of that line coming at you. Yeah, you know, because if you right, you have someone like Suds or somebody coming at you. That's a different ball game. Yeah. If, if you're on the you're right, right that's, and you got somebody like protection. Yeah, or, for example, I know, although he's not one, and you got somebody like Johnny Manziel coming at you, you ain't worried about it. Oh, I just knock him out the way. Yeah. You know, but you got somebody yeah. like Terrell well, Suggs coming at right you. Right, tackle, knock that dude in like the fifth <laughs> row of the stands. You got to say, well, wait a minute. I got to learn this technique to keep this big guy down off my quarterback, you know? So it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a development. You know, I mean, that, it just it just made me so mad because, like, you got to be able to take coaching right off the bat. And, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I understand, you know, you're swimming a little bit. Everyone's going to be – everyone's head's going to be swimming every now and again. But you still – you got to be able to – like, if you screw up the first time, I'm not going to get mad at you. But when you're the seventh guy and you're screwing it up, like, come on. Like, 
You got. You should have it down pat. You've been watching. You got to be able to take mental reps. Well, well, no, 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 no. Tr. Sometimes it takes a little person. It may, may take a person a little longer to learn than another person. This is, you know, this, is, so this is the biggest job interview of your life as a football player. Well, well, you know, sometimes you just can't get it right the first time. It's a lot of things I can't get right the first time. So sometimes that's what I'm saying. But like if you're the first guy, if you're the first, if you screw up the first time, you're the first the first couple guys. You know, I, I'm not going to get mad, but. That's why even like Mike Mayock was saying that if this is ridiculous, you're the seventh guy and you're screwing it up. You know, you, why are you screwing up? You've been watching the whole time. This is TRKZ listeners. So if y'all come to this football team and this coaching, he be your coach. You know darn well. You better be on your game. Yeah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna be soft with you. I'm gonna be tough on you. He better be on your game. He's one like the Tom Landry type of coaches. Yeah, but well, then we need him over at the Cavalier Stadium. Let's, then let's head on over down to. Uh, to, to, to uh, uh, what is it? Uh, is it Gunner Quicken Loan? I have to get the name of the well, place. Is it Richfield? Is it Richfield? Uh, Quicken Loan. Loser Loans? Loser Loans. Loan. Loan. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get along with Quicken Loan because them calves. Oh, my <laughs> God. If, God. I, if I were to go over there, I'd have to bring tissues because I'd probably make a few guys cry without. Oh, my goodness gracious. I wasn't going to mention it, but since the possible brought it up. Well, that's one of our next topics. What the hell is wrong He apologized for being sick and not doing the show. I, I'm not glad he got sick, but I'm kind of glad he got a little flu because that gave the Tech Cast time to lose some games that we and TR was talking about a couple of weeks ago, the Raptors. We ain't say anything about the Washington Wizards. Lord, I should have said something about the Washington Wizards. They blew them jokers right out the arena. But let's go to the Cavs, the Raptors. The Cavs probably ended up playing them in the playoffs. Now, they played the Raptors three times. The Raptors won two to one. Now, if the Cavs had any kind of momentum over the Raptors, they don't have it now. Because when you play a team so many times, you keep whooping their butt and whooping their butt and whooping their butt, that team don't get tired of you whooping them. So what happened now, the Raptors got a two to one lead in this series. That's it. Well, but they go, game, it's right. But they got, that gave them the momentum saying, well, wait a minute. We can beat these guys. We can beat these guys with LeBron on the team. Well, I, I had, because my, my you know, family up in Toronto, and my cousin kept texting me all weekend. Oh, you guys aren't aren't any, you guys aren't anything. <laughs> I go, you're gonna okay, so you're gonna uh, come okay. You're a team that is coming out to play the camp because you feel disrespected. So now you're in Toronto, you're gonna disrespect the defending Eastern Conference champions, a team where you have Kyle Lowry and Demar Derozan. Awesome, we have three. Four or five more guys than you have. So what's going to happen when it comes down to Kyle Lowry, when he has to do that? Not just this is one game, but when you're going to have two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven games where if Kyle Lowry has to do it all by himself, it, they're not. You're not going to win. First, but, first of all, sir, excuse me. You did say that you need to look out for Toronto. Yeah, you you no. said it back in the playoffs. I mean, back in the uh, not the playoffs, the star all star game. Look out I told Toronto. him he need to look out for Toronto. Yeah. He, okay. he said Toronto he said, was nothing. They gonna run all over. Oh, that was that what he said. Oh, 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 oh. That's okay. that's what he I, said. I know it was some contradiction in his in, that's, in that's the conversation. And I told him that's the final score, by the way. <laughs> if, if you got <laughs> your can you put it up again? I, I missed that. I saw the oh, game. I'll be like, happy to. Then there's no 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 problem. No problem at all. Final score, by the way. Now, twenty five points, LeBron. Was it Lori? Lori, talking about Lori. Forty-three points. He he killed him. But just think, that other big man they had had a bad day. He didn't even score. I think he scored what? Uh, what did he score about six, seven points? Yeah. If that. And so he had a bad day. This is how I look at it. It's a team sport. LeBron oh. in the game still couldn't get the more. I just think that momentum kind of switched. I really do. My belief is that momentum switched, and that gave Toronto the, the idea to say, okay, if we meet these guys in the playoffs, we the last seed, they the number one seed, they, we can beat them. If we beat them two out of three. But my, my, but my point is that I don't. it's going to be hard for Kyle. Like if DeMar DeRozan, if Jonas Valanciunas isn't on, if that's a consistent like th- two, three, four games in the playoffs, I don't think Kyle Lowry can beat us by himself consistently. I think this. I think if the Cavs play like they played, or let's say like they've been playing, they probably ain't gonna even make it to the championship game. What you think? Huh? I don't, I don't know. If is they play a, like they've a, been playing, I mean, they won't make it to the championship game. You think about this too. 
Feb- I, I give it. I, it's weird to say it's February 29th because of leap year year, but it's February 29th. Mm-hmm. You know, playoffs will start for another two months or another month and a half. Mm-hmm. How many games left? Twenty something. Yeah. Season getting short. Real short. The thing is, the cap. The, now this is what could happen. This is how weird the NBA season is, though. Mm-hmm. The Cavs could now end up going on a twenty-some game winning streak <laughs> or ten-game winning streak, get hot down in the at the end of March. T- Toronto could fall off. Mm-hmm. Boston could get hot. Mm-hmm. And now, and then now everyone's on the Raptor train, and now they're 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 slowly fading. This is what you don't want, and this is what happened with Atlanta. This is what ha- happened. Um, uh, when the Pacers uh, lost to the Heat in the playoffs one year, where the Pacers were the hottest team, where they were hot, and then that last month they cooled off. This happens every year with a ton of teams. That's why I'm not totally have the respect for the Raptors that a lot of people are having now, because you could turn around and totally falter off in the last month, month and a half, of this, in the next month. And now we're looking at now Boston's a threat. That's why, it, especially with the signing of Joe Johnson, I worry more about Miami and Boston than I do Toronto. I told you. The teams the Cavs have to look out for is Boston, Miami, Pacers, Toronto. Which the Cavs play Pacers tonight. I had another team. Who was another team? Boston, Miami, Toronto. Charlotte, maybe? <sighs> no, I didn't say Charlotte. I had another team. But getting back to that, you got 20-something games left. You can't, we talked about this TR off the, off the air. You can't win four, lose three. Win two, lose one, win one, lose three, win five, lose three. You can't you can't do that if you're a championship caliber team. Um you have to go in with the mindset that okay, we're the we're the we're the we're the top dogs of the Eats. Let's play like a top dog team. So well, I feel too there's like a mindset, there's a, a sense of Entitlement amongst the Cavs that you know we were the defending Easter we're the defending Eastern Conference champions. We were in the NBA Finals. We should just get. We should already be put into the finals. Nobody else in the East matters. I think there's a, that's why they're playing the way they are. I think they feel a little bit of entitlement and that they just are looking down on other teams. That other teams, like I said, feel disrespected. That's why they're going to come out and play the way they're playing. So what you're saying is the Cavs has this kind of mentality. Oh, we're playing Apostle James team tomorrow. <laughs> they ain't nothing. We ain't got to go in there playing like no like no uh, leader team or, or the top dog because we playing his team. His team is three and thirteen. We forty something and whatever. Yeah. So huh, we look down on them. So is that what you saying they doing? Yeah. That's what's going. I fight. think that's the wake up call. That might be. Well, well, what about hopefully they use this this coach this coach, game. This coach that Duke. took David Blatt's place. Is he projecting this type of attitude? That uh, hey guys, I feel like Toronto Lee's letting them walk all over, let, letting those guys walk all over him, and that's kind of ticks me off. See, they got to be something. I, 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 that's what. That's why I'm getting kind of turned off with pro sports because it's basically the, the players run everything. That really well, see now, don't forget Tyrone Lue and, and LeBron are supposed to be best friends. That's the problem. See now, if you go that's back, a media projection. If, no, 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 no. If you go back, see when I watch games, I don't only look at the game. I I look when they walk back to the bench. I look at the reaction with the coach. Like, for instance, I'm going to take it back. Mike Brown, he didn't have no control over LeBron. I remember LeBron, he had called a timeout, and he had tried to, you know, I touched LeBron yeah. arm, he had jerked away from him. I told my brother Nian, I said, he done spoiled that brat. He can't do nothing with it. Look, la- look at last year in the playoffs against the Hawks. Black tried to give uh, LeBron a high five, and LeBron <laughs> left him hanging. And then, then if you look at them games when Black was the coach, and when LeBron be sitting on the bench, who do he sit next to? T. Lou. T. Lou. Why you don't sit next to your coach? If you that coach's favorite player, you want to get a relationship with the coach. Whatever they had, that's I don't know. But I know it could be a mix of two things though. It could be either Ty Ty's letting him walk all over more, he's still trying to find his footing. That's well, this is this is the thing. It's, it's it's two things. If you letting him walk over you and you're still trying to find your footing, that's not a good match. Because by the time you find your footing, it's too late to get him in order because you didn't let him walk over you already. Black, if Black was coach, they wouldn't have lost these games. I was thinking that last. I was I thinking agree. that last night. I agree. Saturday, I was thinking the, 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 that they wouldn't have lost. These, I was thinking about that Saturday. I never heard of a coach get fired with a winning record. 
He's the winningest. He's basically the winningest coach I've never heard of in the history of the Cleveland Cavaliers. I wouldn't fired. care if you didn't like him. I didn't care whatever he did. I never heard of a coach with a winning record and took his team to a championship game the year before. Right. Fired. And this is the sad fired. thing is they're the, they're the top team in the East, and this is all people are talking about is the Blatt firing and just how bad they look. Right. And it just there's no team concept. I, I, hopefully, they use yesterday as a wake up call. This really was a call. what a paces this, tonight. Look, guys, yeah. guys, this was what I call. A a B move. Okay. There was somebody in the locker room, probably LeBron, because he's the only B I know, because they didn't like the the, 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 the locker room. Well, the did, locker did, room was the like, problem. Did you like that how he tur- how he like turned away? Was all oh, I I I I had no I didn't, I wasn't consulted. Well, of course he would say that. Of course he would say that. He didn't have to be consulted on the matter. He was the B in the locker room. Like, right, right. He's the he's the he's the voice. That you can't hear, but right. they can hear it. Another thing, and then David Griffin says he doesn't run the team. I think that's talking about the, the locker room statement ever. Let's go to why the Cavs are playing like. I don't think they have any love and interaction in that locker room like they're supposed to have. I look at teams like the Spurs, the Warriors. I even look at Oklahoma Thunder. I look at um, the Clippers, but I really look at Golden State and the Spurs. If you look at they, if you look at their team, and they make a mistake, you don't see the action that you see with the Cavs, LeBron running up on Tristan. You know, you 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 you. You know, they they don't do that. And I feel that you have to have love in your locker room to have that love and that and that togetherness. Well, that Jordan court. used to do. Well, the Jordan used to do that with getting players' faces, but it worked somehow. Well, that was motivation. LeBron, dude, I seen a pass that Tristan missed, and it kind of ticked him off. You know, um, I think that they have love in their locker room, and it, it carries out onto the court. If you watch the Golden State game the other night, when Green actually cursed out somebody, if you don't want me, you tell me what you want me to, and I'll do it. You ask me to get rebounds, you want me to shoot the ball, I'll shoot the ball. If you want me to get rebounds. I get to read. I mean, he was. I mean, at halftime, the commentators was talking about because you heard it on yeah. television. But when he went in the locker room, he came out. Everything was fine. But before he went in, he was still playing good ball. So, what I'm saying is, it's something, and there's something they're missing. That it's 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 the togetherness. It's something the Cavs are missing, where they can't get past. They're that missing hunt. Jesus. <laughs> They're missing, they're missing what I wrote. Better go find the Broncos. Money ain't everything. They're missing what I wrote right here. With the second comment. What they miss? After terrible defense, no team concept. They don't have it. They don't have it. Um, a friend of mine says to me, "Well, Barajan don't look good down there in Golden State." I say, "He only been there a week and a half. This is the third the guy's game." Not, the guy's not going to play as many minutes as people think. Like they, but Anthony this, or. Uh, Andrew Bogut's coming back. I mean, you got Dre, Dre, you got all, too many other guys. We don't know what the cat coach is asking him to do. Yeah. He probably said, "Go in there. You don't have to shoot. Get a rebound. I need you in there for body. I need you in there to take the fouls." You don't know what the coach asking him to get. Yeah, just like Shani Fry's here in Cleveland, right? Shani Fry's is supposed to be here to be a guy who can play a bit of defense and stretch the floor. And they, the they, they, they asked. They, he stretched the floor. They said he was a good three point shooter. I seen him shoot some threes. He's missing them. Yeah. So you can't take one guy and then, oh, because we Cavaliers fan, he's doing this and he's not doing as much as Rajon doing down the <laughs> state. So Rajon was state. used totally wrong. And uh, what opinion. here? Yeah. And well, he and I are using him down there. Then we're gonna get on Steph. Steph is a bad mo joke. Can you admit that? Can you admit that? You got to get credit where it's due. Now, I'm a Pittsburgh he's, fan, I, 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 I get credit where it's due. I, 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 I said Zeke the best is good. I've ever seen. Zeke is good. Yeah. Huh? That's Ohio State. So you don't like to dance. Is that the one you don't like to the dance? Oh, yeah. I would have said that. If but, I was on the court, I would have said that. I, I don't think he don't like to dance. I think he's showing the wrong thing. I think he don't like that. that he's three. the best shooter I've ever seen in my life. Anytime you come from the half court line and take three steps and just stop and jump, fire that ball up, and this look like you shooting a... Yeah, now, now for him to do to, to, for him to make these kind of shots, I'm looking at his arms, I'm looking at his wrists, mm-hmm. and it's not it it doesn't make sense. I mean, he's look where he's at. Look at that. He threw that up like he was at the foul line. Exactly, 
It's like ten foot, sh- ten foot jump. I mean, look at that. One, two, Watch three. It. After the the and halfway, nothing. whoosh! And it's net. It's net. And there was a there was a story on ESPN that, or ESPN.com that says he's basically leading the the new NBA revol- revolution of where it's not points in the paint, you know, tough man defense, you know, bad boy piston uh, basketball, right? Where it's more of a finesse shooting game. Well. My philosophy, all ever since I started watching basketball as a kid, I always looked at the East Coast. I'm, when I say the East Coast, I'm talking about Cleveland, Indiana, Boston, you know, New York, and them With teams the as the as Detroit as the Busters. Yeah, the blue you know, they guys. yeah they they like to be, get mix it up, body hit body. I like that type of basketball. I always looked at the West Coast as a finesse team. Yeah, they're finesse more. They very finesse. They sophisticated. Fis- sophisticated, like to move the ball around, confuse you. In the East Coast, like the bang bodies, yeah. well, sometimes that bang and body ain't gonna get it. Well, it can't. Doesn't work anymore because right. flagrant too. You I'm can't bang a body if it's not there. If you got a guy coming over the half court line <clears throat> and then take three steps and he shoot that jump and you just saw, ain't nobody to be banged because he going back down court. So I um, I think the I think I think they're gonna win a championship. And I think they have at least four or five more to come. Absolutely. This is a young, up and coming team. And if you look at their team, all of them are young boys. Guys, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. And then this is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings that's listening. Cleveland, Ohio mm-hmm. is a farm town. I or agree. Curse town. It's a, a, I agree. It's a, it's a place a where. Look at, like at Chris Rose from the NFL Network when they were supposed to be in a commercial break and they brought the sound back and. Carson Wentz was getting ready to run his forty, and 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 Chris Rose, who's from Cle- he's from Shaker Heights, um, said he goes, "Oh, there's the next former quarterback of the Cleveland Browns." <laughs> it's it's a farm. I, I agree. It, it's a place. It's funny as a Cleveland fan to hear that, but like around the nation, they're like, "Wow, like how can you say that?" College team, the college players come here. Get your get your what, what would you call it, uh, Apostle? Get your um, not your Google. Get your education. Get your right. Go get to boot camp. Get, get your, your boot camp. Get, get, get your education. It may not be good education, but you're gonna get some education. We can go to the next team. Next thing you know, look what you're gonna have. Bing bing, you're gonna have a ring. He practices that shot. Guys. Exactly. He practices exactly. That shot. That's like a regular game shot for him. That's like a ten footer. Jumper to him. I think that's, that's another thing. I, I, I was thinking about. And just think if that Saturday guy shoot ten footers and that he kill you. I, I was thinking about the Saturday night too, where I think it ticks off a lot of the older fans too, because this is like you said, young upcoming team, like young up and upcoming young and upcoming teams. It usually takes them maybe five, six, seven years to win a championship. Mm. It doesn't take them this quick to win. A championship. I think that's why, like a lot of guys and a lot of older guys, like to be proven right. Mm-hmm. And this team is proving those wrong. people wrong. Right. That's a, why people don't like Golden State a little bit. I just, I mean, I'm a Cavs fan. They beat us in the playoffs I, or the finals. I see them as public enemy number one. That's well, and happened. then they spanked us in our own home court. They pulled down your pants and spanked you. Then you want no more fashion for you. You know how your your grandparents used to tell you, "Go get the tub." Huh? We got to you get the switch on. I was at a, a, a Cavs game. I was at the Cavs game when they when they, when they played the Knicks. It's like an extreme. <laughs> and um, I, I wasn't impressed. I just wasn't impressed. They won, but I wasn't impressed. And then I see what you're saying because you got to understand how quick Golden State put that team together. How quick them young boys well, started gelling like together. The third analyst, Mark Jackson, that guy put that team together, and that guy's the one guy's not going to get any credit. Well, you know, and you know what? He ain't asking for it. You no. don't see him on TV saying, well, I put the team together. Because everybody knows it's he put that team together. because guys are too professional. It's not going to have any hard he feelings. He put that team fired. together. Yeah. But that's, uh, um, that team is a team to reckon with in the next six, seven, eight years. Well, the David Black can say, hey, I put that Cavs team together. <laughs> No, and well, I'm the only one that can run it. Not Chris Graham. Well, well, you know what? Chris Graham, the great Deion Waiters he, move. He did put some of that team together. Because don't forget, after they got rid of him, they made some willing dinner run with some other players. Yeah, they got so, rid of Deion. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, I, don't, I didn't ever like him from Syracuse anyway. Um, I, I saw that um, young guy play in Syracuse. And Coach Bain, Cabain, he had, you know, Syracuse was winning then. And he came and he was so upset that he couldn't start. So, Coach Bang had to call his mother, actually call his mother, tell his mother to come to the game. And she had to tell him, and he'd been telling him, he said, I can't 
put him in the starting position and these guys been winning for me for the last three years. Yeah. You know, that wouldn't be fair to them. No. So he had to sit and wait his turn. And he didn't want to do that. So when the Cavs got him and Byron Scott had him, I knew it was going to be a problem because this guy don't want to come off the bench. No, he's, he wasn't. The problem is Dion wasn't ready. And then he had to learn that. And then they trade him to Oklahoma City. So but, but they're going to come off the bench for that line. the bench there. Yeah. Right. So I think he had learned the lesson. Once they trade him, let me keep my mouth shut because I know where I'm going. I definitely have to come off the bench. But then I want to say this. LeBron sit down because it's a new sheriff in town. It's called Steph Curry. <coughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Am I right? But but you know what? I'm not I'm not I'm not blaming LeBron. Here's no. here's, here's what I see. LeBron knew this going in. Mm-hmm. He knew he wanted to leave Cleveland and get his championship. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing Learned he did. how to be a leader and mm-hmm. yeah. how to be how to lead a championship team. Bro, bro, let me tell you something. That's not why he went. LeBron went. To go and win championship, we want to think good of him. We want to think, oh, he wanted to learn how to do this and learn how to do that. He wanted ring. He wanted his ring. He wanted the ring, but like at the same time, he and also needed. He also needed to learn how to to, to be, be a more mature and be a better leader. Sure, but, sure. but if you look at him, did he really learn how to did be he more mature? Not re- I don't know. Okay, so he got that was his purchase. He went there for the ring, and he, he knew he you. would get a ring with Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade. Uh, and, and, and Norris and Cole and they had a bitch down there. He knew he'd get a ring. Now when he said he was coming back to Cleveland, I said to myself, "You ain't getting no ring here. If right. you stay in Miami, he probably would have got him another ring if he would have stayed in Miami." But I said, "If he come back here, he's not getting the ring." LeBron, it, LeBron is very was a very important to our kind. Exactly. That's the bottom line. He exactly. was very important to the kind. Once he came back. The bars, the clubs, the nine hotels. It wasn't just for the RNC. It was the, because Le- LeBron was in right. town. Let's start building. He made that. Line he bring that money downtown. Right. Um, it's just like when he left. Everything it went dead. dead. Yep. You could hear cricket. Every, everything went dead. So when he came back, everybody said, "Oh, he coming back. We got a championship." So that brought that money back downtown. So if he leave again. It, what's going to happen? Well, you know what? I, I think if he, I don't think he's going to leave. I don't. I don't. I don't think he's going to leave. I think he retire here. I think he retired here. But we got to understand, he thirteen years in the league. That's my point. LeBron too. been playing his first seven years. During their all forty eight minutes per game, eighty two games per season. Right. Plus playoffs. Right. Yo, you know, if you're in the league so long playing like that, you got a lot of wear and tear in your body. Now. It was so good about LeBron. He hadn't been injured but one time. I think it's only one time he set out four games. That's when he was here in Cleveland. So that was years ago. So the good thing about him, he hadn't faced that injury like everybody else. Yeah. So 13 years in the league, I think two more years, he good. You know, win out without a championship or with a championship for Cleveland. Time to pack it up. Another young boy. Still go. Go. He's still going to go down as one of the top five oh, he's going players to ever play the game. Oh, he, absolutely. He's good. He's good with what he does. But he, like you said, you, he can't do it by himself. And then when you see that team running down there, and he's running, and then everybody's looking for him to give him the ball. The, well, that's another thing that drives me absolutely nuts is and when he he the ball, team. everyone stands around. Like, you, you set picks, you get open. Like, the, th- the guy who's defending you, throw him into the bench. I don't know. Get open somehow. Yeah, and but they so used to that. They so used to him taking over the game. Mm-hmm. So and they probably afraid to take it over themselves because they're afraid the coach may bench him and sit him down. So let's look for LeBron. Well, let's take a break, guys, um, and come back with what Johnny? Come back with. Should we talk Os- Oscars? Oh, uh, in the background, I got playing the the Cavs brand new theme song. It it's called? a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Should play it on Ain't No Sunshine. <laughs> Even one of them would have been, well, no, Ain't No Sunshine when he's gone. He's here. Yeah. <laughs> so. There ain't no sunshine when she's gone. No, I have no finals trophy. Yes, sir. I was going to, I have Cap to the, I had Cap, I was going to talk about Cap, but there's only so much you can talk about Cap. It's just all we can say is that. Um, I think he'd be with Chip Kelly, though, man. 
I think that offense would suit him well. I mean, they do a lot of read option stuff, get him out of the pocket. I just, my problem is I've never seen a quarterback five years in the league and still struggle in the pocket. Well, he's not a pocket passer. Yeah, that's my other point. You have to take coaching. You have to be able to develop. You have to be able to adapt. We'll, we'll see. I mean, Russell Wilson can do it. But Russell Wilson came from the pro style system, too. Yeah, we'll see, too. That's, that's where the spread thing. hurts. If you're so runs. used to, for your last five years, playing like a, like a what, wildcat system? Or uh, coming out the pocket, ripping and running around? Then when you get a coach and say, I want you to quit running, stand in the pocket. He probably gonna say, I'll probably say if I die, it's me. Man, that ain't my game. My you game is to come out the pocket and run. Down. That's the same thing like with Magic Johnson you know, when they won that championship and then the regular coach got injured in a bicycle accident and they put West Ball in there. He changed their game and Magic then was like, we're not playing our game. Magic wasn't throwing the scissors like he used to throw out, you know. He slowed the game down. The Lakers were so used to running. So they was like, we're not playing our game. So they got rid of him and put, brought in this uh, is where Riley. It, that's where the spread is killing the development of quarterbacks in the NFL, where these guys are coming from spread offenses in college. That's why you need to go back to more pro-style reads and, or maybe fit that into where you're more in the pocket instead of a hurry-up, read option, rip, rip, rip and go. You got you, mm-hmm. you got. this is where – that's why it's – you have to be able – then, like, you look at Cam Newton. Cam Newton spread, quarter, spread quarterback in college, mm-hmm. and the guy can play in the pocket well. Yeah, because when they got him, he's been in the league, what, five years, seven years? Who? Cam Newton. When he was drafted. He yeah. came from Gus Mail's on system. Or so they taught him how to They taught him how to play in the pocket. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's coaching. You have to teach right. him. That's right. why Cap has to learn to play in the pocket. He needs to see a sports psychologist, too. And like it, because he had a little, I think it was like, he would always second guess was I thought too much. Like right. Uh, you realize if they nominated host, I wouldn't even get this job. They didn't know how to react to this. You know, it's too busy being raped and lynched to care about who won best cinematographer. <laughs> you know, when you when your grandmother's swinging from a tree, it's really hard to care about best documentary foreign short. But what happened okay. this year? Well guys, we're back right here on KZ Radio. Cleveland's online inspiration station. We'll watch some more of that um, that performance by none other than uh, Chris Rock. But what did you guys think so far? I think I think it was great. I thought um, it was funny. It's, it's it was funny, but it was true. Yeah. Um, 
just I, I, to say this, it was funny, but it was true. Um, just like uh, me and Apostle and T.R. was sitting up here watching, and uh, uh, Apostle said, now listen to this one, this is deep. You know, well, they didn't protest back then because, you know, being lynched, murdered, raped. It's a different world and a different generation of people now. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I really think now that some of our voices are heard now, but it's not heard really the right way. Um, well, I mean, he he even talked about his his grandmother hanging from a tree. Exactly. I mean, those things are very seldomly touched upon. Exactly. That happened in our American history. Right. And and and, and for him to bring it out, people were like, "Do I laugh? Do I not laugh?" I mean, it was some deep things right. he was he was throwing and, out. And, there. and you think about the world now, and 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 the world back then. Um, I didn't live that world back then, but I read a lot about it, and I have a great great grandmother, grandmothers that taught me and and talked to me about that world. And I know you you probably wasn't even born when I was. Well, yeah, I learned about but, it. But right, I was. I'm a, I'm like but not as much, but I was a big history buff. Right, and and, and you think about it, you know, the the slavery is is over. You know, we have a black president, but. This world is still prejudiced, but in a different way. They showing it in a different way. It's uh, uh, um, it's not like you being slayed and whooped and hung, but still it's done in a different way. Well, yeah. I mean, the question was asked. He, you know, uh, is Hollywood racist? Yes, it is. And he said, you know, we can probably play it. Well, the sorority race. Yeah, the sorority, sorority, sorority race. racist, which yeah. which is is very true. Yes, is. Oh, I love you. I like you. Yeah, but you're not a part of the sport. Exactly. Yeah, especially being a recent college grad. I mean, that's exactly. how sororities and fraternities are. Like, right. oh, you're not a part of our frat. Well, we don't want to talk to you. Right. Them. Exactly. Exactly. But the nice people, but don't want to talk. Yeah, exactly. yeah they're, they're the nice. They're the nice. Yeah, he told. Uh, he was at a fundraiser for President Obama. And right. He took that picture with him. He goes, you have that moment. He goes, hey, you see all these people here, these writers, producers? He goes, they don't hire black people. He goes, and they're the nicest white people. <laughs> right. ever, ever met. Right. The nicest liberals. Let's, let's, let's watch that. He said, the nice liberals you ever want to meet. Can we play it? Show the TV show. Jada's going to boycott the Oscars. Jada boycotting the Oscars is like yeah. me boycotting Rihanna's yeah, I'm kick out that one. I wasn't invited. <laughs> we'll turn that invitation anyways. <laughs> oh, that's not an invitation I would turn down. Uh... <laughs> no, I'm not hating. I understand you're mad. Jason Black, my man, Will, was not nominated for concussion. I get it. I get it. Tell the truth. I get it. I get it. You get mad? She said, it's, it's not fair that Will was this good and didn't get nominated. Yeah, you're right. It's also not fair that Will was paid $20 million for Wild Wild West, okay? I like that movie. <laughs> Things are gonna be a little different. This thing, things are gonna be a little different at the Oscars. This year, in the in memoriam package, it's just gonna be black people that were shot by the cops on their way to the movies. Yes, yes, I said it. All right. Hey, if you want black nominees every year <laughs> you need to just have black categories that's what you need you need to have black categories you, you already do it with men and women think about it there's no real reason for there to be a man in a woman category in acting it's track it's not come on there's no reason it's not track and field <laughs> you don't have to separate them you know, Robert De Niro's never said, I better slow this acting down so Meryl Streep could catch up. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all, man. If you want black people every year at the Oscars, just have black categories like, best black friend. <laughs> That's right. And the winner for the 18th year in a row is Wanda Sykes. <laughs> yeah, that guy is dying. This is Wanda's 18th black Oscar. But here's the real question. The real question everybody wants to know, everybody wants to know in the world, is this Hollywood racist? Is Hollywood racist? You know, that's, that's 
that's a, that's a, you know, you gotta go at that the right way. Is it, is it burning cross racist? No. Is it text me some lemonade racist? No, 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 no. It's a, it's a different type of racist. Now, I remember one night I was at a fundraiser for President Obama. A lot of you were there. And, you know, it's me and all of Hollywood. And all the, you know, it's all of us there. And there's about four black people there. Me, uh, let's see, uh, Quincy Jones, Russell Simmons, Questlove. You know, the usual suspects, right? <laughs> you know? And, and, and every black actor that wasn't working. Needless to say, Kev Hart was not there, okay? <laughs> so, at some point, you get to take a picture with the president. You know, and as they're setting up the picture, you get like a little moment with the president. I'm like, Mr. President, you see all these writers and producers and actors? They don't hire black people. And they're the nicest white people on earth. They're liberals. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Is Hollywood racist? You're damn right Hollywood's racist. But it ain't racist you, that you've grown accustomed to. Hollywood is sorority racist. It's like... We like you, Rhonda, but you're not a kappa. <laughs> That's how Hollywood is, yeah? But things are changing. What did you guys? Very interesting. Yeah. It was, very interesting. Very, very true. Monologue, yeah. Very true. You know, very true. Very interesting. Very Especially, true. too, like, you know, Mick, there were a lot more to worry about in the 50s and, and 60s with, you know, you know, civil rights movement, the height of the Vietnam War was in the 60s, you know, you had still had, you know, the space race was in the 60s, you had so much more right. to worry about. And the same thing now, like, you know, we got, you know, ISIS sure. that wants to kill us, we got, right. you know, <laughs> two political parties that can't get along with each other, we got right, exactly. three Republican candidates that just bash each other the whole time. I, the part I didn't get was when Dash came out. Oh, well, Stacey Dash, yeah. Yeah, the week, they they showed the, the singer of the weekend. Uh, yeah, Nobody got out. Everybody was like, was quiet. You can hear pin drop. Yeah, uh, it was uh, Drake's <laughs> buddy, the weekend. He sat there because he performed his song from Fifty Shades of Grey, and he sat there and was like, "What?" I didn't understand that either. I didn't. I was like, "Huh?" Because that, that's why I was like, "Huh?" And huh? that's all I said. Right. Because I didn't get it, and I still didn't. Yes. Still, yes, still don't get it. I said, I mean, I've heard some explanations with that she was there for you know Chris Rock or whatever, mm -hmm. but. I didn't get it. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was a little... Until today, I still don't get it. Yeah. yeah. That was weird. That was weird. I liked the uh, the uh, superhero teases there with, you know, Henry Cavill who's playing, who plays the new Superman. And, and then you had um, Jared Leto and Margot Robbie who are Joker and Harley Quinn in the Suicide Squad movie. And you had um, uh, our Chadwick Boseman who's playing... Um, T'Challa, the King of Wakanda, and Black Panther, and the Avengers, and then you had Chris Evans as Captain America. You see, this would uh, this would throw me. I off. wish they would. I wish they would nominate superhero movies because that's a huge following, and a lot of those. Sure. Have, you get well, that some Mad Max cleaned up, but yeah, he didn't yeah. win it the most popular. Yeah, this is what I'm get. I, I I know my little great um, nephew asked me to take it to the movies. He wanted to see Superman and Batman. I didn't know that. I said, Yeah, okay, we can go see that. That was my superheroes when I was coming up. He said, like, Who you think gonna win? I like, huh? He's like, who you think gonna win? I said, what you mean? The, the hero is gonna win. He said, oh, he called me Uncle JJ. He said, Uncle JJ. I said, what? He said, Batman, Superman going against each other. Yeah, I Batman said, v what? Superman. <laughs> I said, they, they had both guys on Kimmel <laughs> last night. I was like, huh? What? What's going on? Really? They, I mean, Batman and Superman? They were your, you know, they were your savers. They were your heroes. Right. Now they got them going. To, I said, oh boy, we're in trouble now. <laughs> well, it's based off of um, the Dark Knight Returns storyline, where a little bit where they both they go both go to battle, um, where Superman is seen as Reagan's right hand soldier to do his dirty work a little bit, and Batman's more of the pe man of the people and. He takes him on in an armored suit. So Superman turned to crook now, right? Basically, yeah, well, what happened with the new Man of Steel where he basically destroyed him and General Zod destroyed Metropolis. And I guess the storyline with that is Batman had... That's the new clip from last night on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Um, but... But there's no way Batman can be Superman. There actually is. He beats him in The Dark Knight Returns. 
He has that armored suit. I'm going to leave this alone. Oh, he had kryptonite suit? (laughs) No, he had Oliver Queen hit Superman with a kryptonite arrow. Superman caught it, but as he caught it, there was a five-second dispersal timing lock where it dispersed in his face, and then that's when Batman defeated him. And Batman says, my my favorite line ever in literature, I want you to remember, in all your glory, I want you to remember this face. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. Mm. When you're a, when you're a millionaire who has seventy, <laughs> who can spend seventy million dollars on a kryptonite rock, who's, who watched his parents get killed in, in right in front of him at age eight, and the guy who I like him because the guy does whatever is necessary to get the job done, and that's what I like about Batman. Well, I guess I got to go back and watch some Green Hornet movies. <laughs> Plus, Batman, like I can't, I can't be Superman. I can't be the Flash. I can't right. be. I I could Jeez. be Batman. That's why I loved him so much as a kid. Why so many people are fans of. Because we all have the opportunity yeah. to become a Batman, right? Right, yeah. right. right. And that's true. But Chris, I mean, with the right with the right suit, yeah, you know, the right automobiles, you know, the right you know, butler. Also, come from a very rich family as well, right? Like, all this money, but right. um, mm. the thing too is the, the new Batman. They're portraying him as an underground MMA fighter. Oh, so I mean, like you don't know that, but like the audience fans should be that. Like you feel for that fighter that he has to go up against because you don't know that you're going up against one of the greatest crime fighters of all time, right? A guy who's disciplined in seven forms of martial arts, where he could with one touch break your arm like that. Would, wow, that I like you feel for that fighter, but that fighter doesn't know that the guy, he used to, that he's Batman. Well. Wow. Well, I guess I'll go back to watching Daffy Duck or something. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. My, now, my, my, my superhero, uh-huh. Popeye the Sailor Man. Okay. <laughs> Robin Williams the, was Popeye the Sailor Man. Yeah, Popeye was, is, was the ultimate superhero. And that's one thing I miss about, like, you know, you know they had Louis C.K. come out and and do that award presentation, and like, he was kind of funny, but I miss, like, when Robin Williams would come out there and, you know, rest in peace to Robin Williams. Uh, he's one of my favorite comedians of all time. But I miss when he would come out there and he would, you know, impersonate the the actors and he would make fun of the academy and all this stuff where Louis C.K. really, I mean he did that a little bit but it wasn't to the degree that Robin Williams would do it or Will Ferrell would come out and do it and I, I, I missed that about it a little bit. I like I like Apostle St. Joan Rivers <laughs> she would come and she would crack on with what did she have on? <laughs> He should have came half the day. Yeah, no, yeah. Naked, the, with that stuff on, you know? the two funniest people at the Oscars usually, and they're both, they have, you know, have left us, but I think it, it sort of misses that flair that it once did. And yeah. Two, you have to understand, the, the, most, the Academy is mostly made up of weird British people that, no. I mean, they find <laughs> right. the, white, the white walls, or the walls in this room they would find interesting. Now, now speaking of the Oscars, they said <coughs> that they, it, it's going to take about what four or five years for it to change, to um, you know, for this to change. You know, I, I really don't know. My thing is, why do it have to take so long? Why do it have to take four or five years? Well, right now you, you figure what movies, what lines, what you know, uh, acting I mean, opportunities are out there. The, uh, like you know, you have you know, comedies or are made more in the forefront. Uh, you have what is called the next five years, the superhero revolution, where all these superhero movies are coming out. So the Oscars come out every year, right? Uh, every Right, right. right. So why is it going to take them four or five years to make the change if the Oscars come out every year? If, is, are is, there any movies, movies with blacks in them right now that's going to be coming out over the next year? Okay. For if, good roles? And I mean, you just don't want to throw anything up there. Mm-hmm. I mean, Some you want to be sure that it's a good acting Role. Well, I mean, yeah. The one, thing I, the one thing that surprises me is like Idris Elba is an amazing actor, and how he doesn't get recognized. But Tate Diggs is an amazing actor. He doesn't get a lot of right. big time movie roles. It was a, it was, it was a few movies also. Medea, Medea does some great, great movies. Tyler Perry is awesome. Exactly. I love that Medea movie. Exactly. Um, I guess you know. I guess it's different strokes for different folks because I've seen it's, some it's, movies up there I mean, that I wouldn't yeah, even. It's a lot of older people. people. It's a lot of very old people, right, very old right. school. And then we're not the voters they, anyway. And, and they they like the way things the way it is, and they're not. Yeah, like, they don't want no change. They don't want change. Right, 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 right. Because right. because I, I mean I have to admit the the, the the younger generation to me, I I don't sense the racism that I sensed from this older generation. Exactly. I'm fifty three. Exactly. Racism all over the place. Guys, I, 20, 20. 
I don't sense it. I told um, a friend of mine, I'm glad you mentioned that because we were talking about that. The more, the more it's not more, it's, yeah, racism's not anywhere like it was back in the day. It's the more the prejudice is, it's more now old versus young. I, exactly, exactly, because that's what I was getting ready to hit at. Because I told him, I say, the more racist people you see are the older ones right. who were back in that time. You know, right. uh, um, that are not you don't want change, not used to change. You know, so you, you're right. I agree with that. It's been, I mean, you see, like a lot of these weird actors get it, where like you know somebody, like, yeah, Andrew Alba doesn't get right. Will win say, one or how many passes? Uh, how the, uh, uh, you know Leonardo DiCaprio gets his first Oscar after being nominated six times, and the guy is brilliant <laughs> roles, Bri- right. brilliant roles. Yeah. You know, so I was glad he got one too because he deserved it. I mean, it well, guys, we got a few more minutes left. Uh, what else we got on the agenda? Anything? Uh, I was uh, I was going to talk. Well, Indians' first spring training games tomorrow at three o five against the Cincinnati Reds. Interesting to see how they'll come oh, out. Oh yeah, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch that. One of my friends, just uh, my friend Adam, he is going to sign. He signed with a small professional baseball team in Arizona, so he goes out there in May. So I, I told him I, t- I talk. I would mention it on air today. Yeah, great success to him. Good luck. I'm hoping he, if it kills it. Well, they're, they're looking for a PA announcer there, too. So Hey, maybe you can get it. There you go. There you so go. T.R. Well, you need to have your voice, man. You better, you better, you better start talking. Hey, <laughs> man, no. <laughs> head up to bat. Uh, man, head up to bat. Adam. Romania. <laughs> <laughs> um, but here, we'll leave you with this in the last three minutes. A little teaser to have people read into this. Bleacher Report team stream, NBA rumors. Cavs is Kyrie Irving. Isn't happy with situation in Cleveland, according to ESPN. Point guard would prefer to play elsewhere. Mm. So we get a little Russ Dur- Durant, mm. a little bit of Harden Howard now in this mm. time. Mm. Well, this is the thing. Did you watch him play in Duke? Nope, because he only played nine games. Hurt himself. Then he came to the NBA. Am I right? I've seen. I, I watched a few games. When he's right, right. Two. That's how I'm saying. I watched yeah. a few because he he got hurt, and so he only played nine games for Duke. So. Um, very interesting that he's making that comment. Um, you know, um, just like uh, Apostle said, it's, it's no chemistry there and it's a lot of bickering going on, but we don't see it, but we hear it, you know? Yep. So, um, very interesting. Go Warriors. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I miss from T.R. We'll, you know we'll close out with that. Uh, <laughs> this is T.R. closing it out here on Talking Sports with Johnny. And Larry, uh, we'll see you Friday. Friday, uh, we'll re- we'll talk a little bit um, about the Cavs and the NBA. We'll hit on a little bit of Indians, and uh, we'll try to talk um, about the man on the front of your Sports Illustrated, Connor McGregor. He has a fight coming That's up guy, Saturday. Right? Yeah, I love how he's calling out the uh, the heavyweight division. That's coming up Friday on Talking Sports with Tim Riggler. We're out. Thanks. All right, guys. Good show. Oh, NFL free agency is next Wednesday. Yep, sure he is.